Okay, in today's Wanger Flange build, we're going to take a look at the Hoberman Sphere. Um, this is an expanding type structure, uh, usually made from some sort of polyhedron. This one's a dodecahedron. It can expand out and then contract in. Uh, this video is going to do the geometry and technical aspects, and in another video I'll do an actual real-life build. Um, but the problem is, how do you get the scissor action to work properly? Uh, so we're going to show you in this video how you can take any polyhedron with some simple steps and make this type of um, expanding structure out of it. Uh, it's super easy and hopefully uh, pretty much anyone will be able to follow along quite easily. Okay, let's start with a couple of polyhedrons. We've got a cube, everybody knows what a cube is, equal on all sides, and we've got a dodecahedron. Uh, quick note, the dodecahedron and cube all have the same edge length, uh, so they don't have variable edge lengths. I'm going to do work out this um, uh, initially, and then I can work on other things later, but this is a, a, just an example for today. We'll work with the dodecahedron because it's probably a more rounded, nicer shape. As you can see from this, we have a. Uh, I've cut a hole in the top so that we can get access to the um, inside of this structure. Right. All polyhedrons have a central point, so we take that central point and we um, draw a line out to the node to make this inside. Um, it's a triangle, but you've got the uh, the centre of the polyhedron in the middle and then you've got the edge length on the side. And that's pretty much all we need to get started. The first job is to copy and paste this central section out and then we need to lay it flat so that we can work on it. We have the centre at the bottom and the line out to the edge is from the inside of the polyhedron and the top line is the strut length. What we need to do is to divide this space up. We need to divide it into four different but equal sections, like so. Then we need to um, create a portion of a sphere because um, the strut length is straight at the minute, we need to make that round so that if that strut was to run all around the polyhedron it would create a ball. So it's it's basically we start at the bottom and we do a portion of, this, of a sphere across the strut length like so. That would be the whole sphere all the way around. In SketchUp we need to make this a group so that nothing sticks to it because we're going to add on top of this but we don't want the geometry to form together. Okay, at this point we need to, to draw a couple of lines. Let me zoom in here. Right, uh, the, the first one, that's right, here we go. First one is from the from right to the edge to the middle and the second one is to the halfway point. Make sure these are nice and accurate because this is uh, what forms the geometry for the scissors and if this is not done accurately it'll cock it up. Okay next watch carefully how I um, move these, cop it's a copy move and align them to, you can line them to any of those uh, radiating lines, but uh, just do the same as I do here. Align that one exactly on that line. That's the big, the longer length. We only have two lengths in this, a long one and a short one. Let's grab the short one next. Now the short one sits on top of the long one that we've already aligned. And what we want to do next is to rotate this round so that the very end of it is just, let's look closely, is in line with this next line. This is the centre line, I'll call this the centre line. We don't need to be accurate as possible. The more accurate we get that, the better. Right to the end of there. 
then we need uh, another one of the short lines so we'll copy that copy move that to the bottom and then we'll rotate that again so that it's in line with this center line now if you look closely it doesn't reach the first line let me just look at that a bit better there's a little gap there uh, what we want to do with that gap is to fill it in with our standard line draw and that creates our um, polyhedron and then we need to mark the center of that little gap line I'll call it the center we need to mark that because that's the um, where we're having a hole so the, the, the two lines don't meet we fill in with a short piece and we mark the center of that line that is pretty much all of the geometry done to work out the scissor action I'll just move that out the way so that we can see it separately now we're going to use this as a template to build our scissor mechanism delete the uh, original one so let's work on this now okay I'm going to kick the speed up now and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, draw some circles um, with our holes we uh, uh, this is on this example I'm doing I think a, th a 14 millimeter circle and a six and a half millimeter hole uh, that's what I need and I'm just going to build this as a reaction it's fairly straightforward so I've speeded this up a wee bit we put we cut the holes in the, uh, notice that we are using all the points to, to make the holes that's where the center of our holes go and then once that's done we will just extrude it into a little plate we'll um, triple click that and make it into a component and that's job done uh, we're finished now it's just about uh, assembly this will work on any other polyhedron you choose as well you just it's exactly the same process if it's a cube um, octahedron whatever you like this always works uh, the next section I'm going to speed up again we just need to mark the center of uh, our holes with a little I just do it with a little line um, and then we assemble the scissor action onto our template uh, and this this will test that we've got the right measurements and also um, prep for the complete structure okay now that's done we can make a copy and rotate along this central line and that gives us our scissor action now you'll notice at this point that the central hole is on the um, I'll call it the left line and both of the other holes are in line with the other um, radiating lines uh, that's the geometry that has to work well I'll just bung another scissors in there uh, and now what wherever you slide that scissor action those two end holes always end up on the um, those lines those radiating lines uh, I can set up another um, instance of the um, scissor action lower down and that will um, demonstrate that how, however you move that scissor action it moves along those radiating lines and that's the, the secret for the um, struck the um, mechanism not to pinch and for it to work correctly okay our dodecahedron sample uh, has 30 edge lengths so we need to make um, four scissor joints per edge length so 4 times 30 is 120 you're going to need 120 scissor actions to make this this is a quick example showing the um, uh, one strut length uh, with the wanger flanges on because the wanger flanges will work on the corners so all you need is the wanger flanges to join up at the corners um, with um, 30 of this component this finished sort of uh, assembly join it together and that should be you done uh, next video will show me building this in the real world I'm going to get some laser cut um, scissor actions made and I've got wanger flanges in so I will build building this uh, structure in the real world if anybody wants me to build 
uh, any other polyhedrons just drop us a, a note in the comments or if you want to do if you want me to do plans or um other builds just let me know uh, i hope you enjoyed this one and i'll catch you in the next one